Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Kingston Moorwood um, and this production of the Trumpet Major by the New Hardy Players. The play that you're about to see was written in 1908 by Alfred Evans, who was a chemist in Dorchester, and it was performed by local people. And Hardy was very interested in this production. Uh, in fact, uh, Alfred Evans used to go to Max Gate um, in the afternoons and evenings, and Hardy worked on the script with him. So. Th the play has had additional dialogue written. It's, it's derived from uh, the original novel, The Trumpet Major, which was written in, uh, published in 1880. Uh, but I would say that what they've done, what the Hardy players of the time did, was to, um, to get the spirit of the play without giving you a complete blow-by-blow -blow account of every twist and turn in the tale. Otherwise, we'd be here uh, probably for about a fortnight. So, so uh, and it's, it's very much written in the style of a late 18th century comedy, and in particular, it's got elements of uh, the Harlequin aid in it. And the reason for that is that when Hardy was researching the original novel, uh, he got lots of stories locally, stories from his family about the Napoleonic Wars and um, the period leading up to the Battle of Trafalgar and the, and the very worrying time here in Dorset when we expected to be invaded by the French from about 1802 up to 1805 we were in the front line here and Hardy as a young man heard stories about that um, he went into the churches and in the uh, in the vestry they still had weapons left over from that time which would have been used by the local equivalent of the home guard and these were great long uh, poles with horrible blades on the top, medieval pikes really, that they would have used um, to repel the invader if they came. So although the play is very light-hearted, the background to it is this threat of invasion and it keeps bubbling up in the story. Uh, but just going back to the Harlequinade, Hardy was researching the play as well um, in the British Museum in the library there, and in the evenings he went to the theatre. And at that time, in the 1870s and 1880s, if you went to the theatre, you didn't just see one play, you would see two or three other pieces as well. And quite often, one of those pieces was a harlequinade where you had um, ancient characters, really, Harlequin and Columbine and Piero the Sad Clown and Pantalon the Old Miser and a very, very boastful captain. And it's a form of uh, theatre that derives from Commedia dell'arte. And uh, so when you see the play, those characters uh, had an influence on the way that Hardy wrote the stories and the main characters in the play have the characteristics of these ancient uh, players. So that's the reason why when you see the play tonight you're going to have various interludes of Harlequin dancers and we're very grateful to Dorchester uh, Ballet and Dance for uh, agreeing to take part in this play with us and so we're going to begin the trumpet major ladies and gentlemen with a harlequinade thank you sorry i forgot one very important thing um, this this set as you can see is fairly basic it travels around all over the place uh, and we have done two or three matinees with this show when we didn't have the uh, advantage of having lights so we've had to devise um, a very high-tech solution to showing you whether it's daytime or nighttime. So keep an eye out for that. Thank you.
the widow Garland and her daughter Anne should be biding here, and we under the same roof making merry without them. I've sent my son John to go fetch him in. If so be, it is only for half an hour just to hear the singing. Oh. Well, give him a military welcome. Oh, Come on, mate. That's a good idea. <coughs> Sitting up smart, then. Eyes <laughs> front. <laughs> Salute. I'm so glad you've come, Miss Garland. I'm not used to seeing quite so many people. Oh, well, take a seat. Upon my honour, ma'am, but if you should have any misgivings on the score of respectability, ma'am, we'll pack off the underbred ones into the back kitchen. Oh, uh, you'll excuse them, ma'am. <laughs> Certainly, Miller Loveday. It's kind of you to think of us. Oh, There's Mrs. Cripplestraw. An old Corporal Tullidge who served one and long in the army. They faithfully promised that as soon as ever Boney's gunboats appear in view and they have fired the beacon, to run down here first in case we shouldn't see it. It is worthwhile to be friendly with them. Oh, it is quite worthwhile, Mr. Loveday. And these soldiers, will they be from the camp upon the down yonder? My son John's regiment be there too. And what rank do you hold now, John? The trumpet major, ma'am. Aye, oh, oh, and he's a good musician. There he would be a soldier. So neither of your sons takes to the milling business? Uh, no, Miss Anne. Robert, you see, must needs go to sea. When he returns from his present voyage, I shall persuade him to stay and help me at the mill. Why didn't you speak to me afore, child? I met you in the lane yesterday and you didn't notice me at all. Not notice you, Corporal? What do you say? I I'm sorry for that, Corporal. You was walking along with your head full of some high notions or other, no doubt. Tis the young bucks that get all the notice these days. Uh, That's old folk be quite forgot. Uh, <laughs> I can mind the time when young Bob Loveday used to lie and wait for ye. Now, <laughs> oh, yeah. well, Corporal, I, I always respect old folk. What do you folk. say? I say that. Why I... do I keep me hat on? Why? Because I was wounded at Valenciennes in June '93. <laughs> he was trying to bomb down the tower when a piece of shell struck me in the head here. Here. <laughs> well, I was no more nor less than a dead man for two days. If it hadn't been for that and my smashed arm, I'd have come home none the worse for my 25 years of service. You've got a silver plate let into your head, eh? You what do you say? You've got a silver plate, a clamp no, on your head. Oh, stick to me cider. Tis pretty drinking. <laughs> the way they mortised his skull is a beautiful piece of workmanship. Perhaps you'd like to see the place, Missy Anne. Tis a curious sight. You don't see such a wound every day. Oh, no, but I'd much rather not see it. Well, she don't want to see your head, but maybe she'd like to hear your arm. What, what, what do you say? Rattle your arm, Corporal. The bone is knocked all to pieces. Oh, uh, I will. Smash to a pummy, same time as me head. Oh, please don't do that. Oh, oh, oh. Don't hurt him, bless he. Do it, Corporal. Bless he, not a bit. There's no life in the bones at all. They may be as loose as a bag of nine pins. You can feel them quite plain. He'll undo his jacket in a minute to oblige him. No, I, I, I quite understand. Well, does she want to hear her and see any more, or don't she? No, Corporal, sit down. Has anybody seen the terrible flat bottomed boats the enemy are going to cross in? Well, my brother Robert saw several of them paddling about the shore the last time he passed the streets of Dover. There are supposed to be more than 1,500 of they boats, and each of them can carry 100 men apiece. A oh, landing of 150,000 men might be expected any day. Oh, Lord have mercy on us! Uh, tis the night time when they'll try it on, and tis my belief the point they'll make for sure is over there. <laughs> when do you think it will be, Corporal? Well, I can't say to the day, but it's certain it will be in a down-channel tide. Yeah. And instead of pulling hard against it, he let his boats drift. That'll bring him right into Budmouth Bay. It'll be a beautiful stroke of war if so beat is quietly done. Beautiful, did you say? But how if we all be a bed, Corporal? You can't expect a man to be brave in his shirt tails. Oh, Boney's not coming this summer. I say he's not coming at all. When lawyers try to heal a breach and parsons practice what they preach, then a little bumpy hill pipes down and marches men on London down. Rollick and roar and toll la roar and rollick and roar and toll la lay. Rollick and roar and toll la roar and rollick and roar and toll la lay. 
when justices hold equal scales and rogues are only found in jails. Say, little Bowie, he'll pass out and march his way on London town. Rollick and roar and toll a lore and rollick and roar and toll a lay. Rollick and roar and toll a lore and rollick and roar and toll a lay. When rich men find their wealth a curse and fill there with the poor man's purse. Why, here's young Squire Derryman. Master when Derryman. husbands with their wives agree that maids won't wet from modesty, <laughs> then little Boney he'll pounce down and march his men on London Town. Oh, Rollick and roar and tom the lore and Rollick and roar and tom the lay. Rollick and roar and tom the lore and Rollick and roar and tom the lay. Ah, no ceremony, gentlemen, no ceremony. I was passing by. Now my ear was caught by the singing. It is warming and cheering and shall not be put down. Well, welcome, Meister Derryman. Yes, welcome, Meister Derryman. Well, I hardly know you in your soldier's clothes. Ah. You look more natural with a spud in your hand. <laughs> <laughs> more natural with a spud in my hand? Have a care, Miller. Right, right. No offence. It was only my joke, Meister Derryman. Everybody's a soldier nowadays. That's true, sir. Yeah. Drink a drop of this cordial, but don't mind words. Oh, well, <laughs> good health, Chief Miller. Good health, good health well. Master Derryman. Yes, I mind called out. It is ticklish times for us soldiers now. We hold our lives in our hands. <laughs> <laughs> well, those fellows grinning at I say we do. Uh, same with your uncle up at the hall, I suppose. No, no, I'm uh, billeted at uh, Casterbridge. Oh, Casterbridge. Uh, I must call in and see the old... Uh, Old. Old. Uh, old. old gentleman. Old gentleman. <laughs> gentleman. Now, now, the old skin flint. Oh, yes. why, he lives off the sweepings of the barton. Oh. And as for me, well, the profession of arms makes a man proof against all that. I take things as I find them. Uh, quite right. Another drop, Meister Derriman. No, no, I'll take no more than is good for me. Right. Hello, Corporal. How's your head? Ah, <laughs> oh, oh, why, <laughs> tis the, the widow Garland's daughter. You remember me, of course, Festus Derriman of the Yeomanry Cavalry. I remember that your name is Festus, but that's all. As tis well known, especially latterly. I suppose your friends are disturbed by my coming in as they don't seem to talk much. I often find that people are put out on my coming against them. Especially with my regimentals on. <laughs> <laughs> you don't say so. Yes, tis where I have. Perhaps you don't like us warriors oh, as yes. a body, eh? <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you see to laugh at? It was only a little laugh, but I thought you were only a yeoman. And what of that? The yeomanry, my dear, are respected men. Men of good families. Many of us farm our own lands. Oh, Many so of us uh, ride our own charges, don't you know? Unlike these cussed fellows. Do. Oh, what? Oh. These are friends and neighbours of Miller Loveday, and he is a great friend of ours. What are you thinking of talking like that? It is ungenerous of you. <laughs> oh, I, I've affronted you, isn't that it? Fair angel, fair... What do you call it? Fair... Fair Vestal? Vestal. Ah, well, would I had you safe in my own house. But honour is to be minded now, not courting. Rollick and roar and toll and roar. But I do like you. <laughs> I don't allow it. Oh, well, come now. You see how we carry on with the girls in Blanford. Blanford? <laughs> well, this idling won't do for me, folks. I hope not to have come in by rights. But I heard yourselves having a, a merry time and it was worthwhile seeing what you're up to. Oh, you're not off yet, are you, Mr. <laughs> Derryman? <laughs> well, I must get back to quarters, Miller. Yeah, good night. Quite right, sir. Quite right. Good night, ma'am. Uh, good night, sir. Good night, Missy Anne. Good night, night all! Night, Mary <laughs> You should have teased here a little more, Father. Oh! You would have soon made him as crabbed as a bear. It wasn't <laughs> worth well. Uh, he came in friendly enough. Well, we must be off, Mr. Loveday. Thank you very much indeed, sir. We've had a very merry evening. Right. Come on, mate. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye. Good night, all. Good night, good night, good night sir. Right, well, I'll see you right. down the road. Good night, oh. sir. Well, come on. We must be going. Thank you, Mr. Loveday. <laughs> 
What a fine fellow that Festus Derryman is, my dear. Oh, Mother, don't speak of him. He's just a great big bragging fellow. He cares more about his clothes than anything else. If all the yeomen are like him, I don't want to know any of them. But, my dear, he will be quite rich one day when old Squire Derriman dies. You ought to get to know him better. I hear that he has a lot of money hidden away, so they say. What's got there, David? A ladder, sir! A ladder? We've been lying above the post office for a day or two. Oh, what a very strange thing. Uh, I now call to mind that there was a, a letter in the candle three days ago this very night. Large red one, too. Foolish like I thought nothing of. I wonder who he could be from. Southampton, August 12th. Dear father, oh. quite is from Bob. Oh, Bob. <laughs> Since landing, I've thought about your wish that I should give up the seafaring life and come home to the mill, and so I've decided to return to Overcome in three days' oh, time. Three days. Oh, during the time I've been here in lodgings, I've become acquainted with a lovely and virtuous maiden, Matilda Johnson. Just the right sort to make me happy. I've asked her to be my wife. And so as not to deprive you of the pleasure of a wedding, I've arranged to be married at Overcombe. Hope to see you soon, your loving son, Bob. Oh, tis a proper good letter. I never heard a true love better put out or hand in my life. What's it all about? Bob's coming home. Been in a wife with him. Well, he ain't known her long, ever. That's nothing. Nature will find a way rapid enough when the time comes. Come on. <laughs> well, just good news for you, Mr. Loveday. Well, there's Bob's letter, Missy Anne. They'll be here tonight, that's certain, and there's nothing ready for him. Well, if we can be of any use in tidying up a little bit, we'll lend you a hand. Well, thank you, ma'am. I should be real glad of it. <laughs> David, wake up. Bears and you misses are coming to tell you how to mind things. And what did one enough for we two, won't do for she. Aye, aye. There'll be no peace now with if I'll be coming. Oh. <laughs> Matilda Johnson, I've asked her to be my wife. And yet, before Bob left, he gave me a curl of hair in this locket. He's forgotten all about me. I can't keep it now. <laughs> oh, oh, oh it'll never do for Bob's young lady to come here and find the house in this state. Just look at all the dust. Ah, oh, Mrs. Garland. Now, why don't you come and live here with me and then you'll be able to see the things at all times. I've only got old David there and he's a poor dunderheaded fellow for getting up a feast. His sight is bad, tis true, but he's very good at making the beds and oiling the legs of the chairs or I should have got rid of him years ago. Well, Mr. Loveday, that wants considering. I've often thought we was made for one another. I'm not so sure about that. Well, you see, ma'am, I should like to put Bob and his wife in that part of the mill house that you be living in if you'd only choose to come and live here with me. Of course, I'm sure it would be for the happiness of both of us. Now, your late husband was far superior to me in most ways, but I'm certain, ma'am, he couldn't have liked you better than I do. Excuse me, ma'am, won't you? Nothing will be ready for them. You, you, you must send David to Bournemouth to, to get the wedding cake. There, there's no time to bake one. Aye, aye. We must get something ready for him, that's certain. That young chicken must be killed and some of their tender and well-washed chitlings cooked plain in case you would want to change. Anne and I will see what we can do to the baking of some apple pies and cakes suitable for the wedding feast. Why, I believe I hear the sound of cartwheels are coming up the road. That'll be they, sure enough. Oh, there, there. Here we are. Hand down the luggage. <laughs> well, Bob, my lad, you've come home at last. Uh, we... <laughs> this is very sudden, Bob. But we're glad to see uh, you. <laughs> Good to see you, Father. Oh, 
How's all here at home? Well, here's Mrs. Garland and Miss Anne over here just now. How do you do, ma'am? Very nicely, thank you, Captain Roberts. They've been helping to get the house straight for you. The letter only reached here tonight. Oh. So uh, they, she's been helping to get your house straight for uh, ye and your young woman. Oh, she'll be along directly. <laughs> to show you what a capital sort of wife she'll be, I may tell you that she wanted to come by the Mercury coach, because tis a little cheaper than the other. But for once in your life, says I, do it proper and come by the Royal Mail. And I'll pay. Uh, so I came along with a horse and gig with the luggage. Now, this parrot, this one's for you, Father. For me. <laughs> this other one I hardly know what to do with. Well, oh, it is by far the prettiest, Captain Robert. I, I should like to have that one. <laughs> Isn't he a beauty? Oh. Hello, pretty Paul. How do you do, Miss Anne? Oh, but uh, truth to tell, Miss, uh, he, he won't do for you. He's a hard swearer and too old to be broke of it. <laughs> oh, how dreadful! Yeah. Well, we could have him at the mill, Bob. Don't matter about my grinder hearing him, for he couldn't cuss worse than he do already. <laughs> <laughs> well, then the grinder shall have him. No, Cage is here. Hey, babe. Here's a few more things. Well, one of these shawls I'm going to give to my young lady because, uh, well, because I ought to. Well, of course. <laughs> this other shawl I hardly know what to do with. Uh, will you have it, Miss Anne? No, I couldn't really. No, thank you. Oh, do have it. Well, there's another reason that you ought to. Never came into my head till just this moment that I used to be your sweetheart in a humble sort of way. Yeah, so I did. And we used to meet places. And once I gave you, or was it somebody else? A bit of my hair and fun. <laughs> it was somebody else. But it was you I used to meet, or tried to, I'm sure. Oh, perhaps it was. Still, I'm sure you should accept one gift. Out of compliment to those boyish times. No, thank you. Well, then, Mrs. Garland, you shall have oh, it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> now, here are some cat ribbons uh, of the splendidest sort I could get. Now, have these, do. Oh, yes, do, dear. I'd much rather not have them. Well, I had promised them to Matilda, but I'm sure she won't want them. Well, the sooner see them on your head as upon hers. I think you'd better give them to your bride, especially if you promised them to her. Well, it wasn't exactly a promise. I just said, Tilda, there's some cat ribbons in my box if you'd like them. <laughs> And you shall have them. Upon my soul, you shall. Or, or I'll fling them down the mill tail. Oh, if you insist on it. <laughs> oh, what would Tilda say if she knows it? Ah. Indeed. He didn't buy them for me. It's wrong of you. You should bestow your gifts, or you bestow your love. There now, I've gone and done it. Ask her to come back and forgive me, Mrs. Garland. I hardly knew she was that sort of a girl. Why, if it been Matilda now? <laughs> well, Robert, about this. Young woman of thine, Matilda, what was her name? Uh, oh, uh, Matilda Johnson. Johnson. Yes, yeah, so I was just going to tell you of her. Well, she's a nice, good, comely young woman. A miracle of genteel breeding, you know, and all that. And she's got splendid gowns and head clothes. In short, you might call her a land mermaid. <laughs> well, she'll make a first-rate wife. <laughs> oh, I'm sure she will, for I've never known thee wanting in sense in a general way. <sighs> Coach! I'll fetch her along. <laughs> David! Bring the best glasses from the corner cupboard. <coughs> David, bring a corkscrew. David, whisk the tail I smock frock round the inside of their mugs. David, put the kettle on! Oh, and David, light some more candles. <laughs> oh, how lovely. Oh, delightful, delightful. Welcome, Miss Matilda. Miss We'd be delighted to see you. Well, I'm delighted. It's just lovely. You must have a drop of cordial. Yes, I do like cordial. David. Uh, yes. Father's homemade this. Thank you. Thank you, David. Uh, thank you, David. Well, here's health and happiness to us all. Health and happiness. Health and happiness. <laughs> Thank you, David. Mm. Thank you. Well, uh, here's Mrs. Garland and Miss Anne. They do bide under the same roof with us. How do you do? It's so lovely here. You have a, a real stream of water and a real millstone and... Real ducks and everything. 
Yes, it is real enough. And you'll soon know it once you've lived there in messes and have to clean the furniture. What Go lovely on, egg beans, to be sure. And oh, what a lovely lot of china. It's so lovely to be in so homely a place. You get the sea breezes here, no doubt? Well, yes, my dear, when the wind is this way. Do you like the windy weather? Yes, uh, though not at present, for it blows down the young apples. Apples are going to be plentiful, it seems. You country folk call St Swithin's Day your christening day if it rains, don't you? Yes, my dear. <laughs> oh, I haven't been to a christening for many a year. The baby's name was George, I remember. Well, after the king, you know. I hear King George is staying at Budmouth. I do hope he stays till I've seen him. He always waits till the corn turns yellow. He always does. How very fashionable yellow is getting for gloves just now. Yes. Now I hear some people wear them to their elbow. Do they? I was not aware. I struck my elbow last week so hard on the door of my aunt's mansion that I feel the ache still. <coughs> oh, la! What dreadful creature is that? Oh, what a horrid bull. I'm so frightened, I hope I shan't faint. <laughs> she won't harm you, ma'am. She's as timid as a mouse. <coughs> I shall be gored to death, I am sure. <laughs> <laughs> the woman's not used to country life, seemingly. It's the journey, too, that's worn her out. Yeah, no woman would have been frightened at the blare of a cow if she'd been up to her natural strength. I shall be better soon. Uh, Captain Loveday, some of the water's going onto her green silk neckerchief. Robert, be careful! Oh, everything is so strange about here. That's right, my dear. Oh, no, more hideous country sounds. Oh, no, that's just my son John's trumpeter chaps up at the camp. He's trumpet major as ye may know, ma'am. He'll be here directly. I've heard dear Bob mention him. Ah, here's John now. Bob? John! Oh, I didn't know you were coming back. Oh. John, draw up and speak to Miss Matilda Johnson, Bob's betrothed. Ma'am, this is Bob's brother, John. Oh, you're humble servant, ma'am. Heavens! Bob's What's to be mother. done? You don't feel very well. <laughs> oh, do sit down. Bob? Yep. Please leave me alone. I, I, I am tired. I am overtired. Anne, my dear, come and see if her bed is re made ready for the night. I'll get you some more cold water. Are you, are you quite all right now, my dear? Bob, dear, I think I'll go to bed. Could you please see to my box? Yes, I'll, uh, I'll take your things upstairs. Uh. I must speak to you. Yes. Yes, of course. You are Bob's brother. I, I didn't for the moment recognise you. But you do now. Oh, yes, as Bob's brother. You've not seen me before. No, no, I have not. Good heavens. What a lie. I say, I say I have not. Oh, nor any other men in my regiment. Captain Jolly, for instance. Certainly not. So you are mistaken. I'll remind you of particulars. You know what you are. You scandalise this house by coming here. You are bringing my brother to ruin by deceiving him, and I won't see it done. You must leave this house at once. Hear me and let me speak. I won't hear a word. You are an imposter and you must go. Bob knows nothing of my past. If Bob only knew what I know about you, he would never have brought you here. Have you no you... pity? You can sleep here tonight, but you must leave this house at daybreak tomorrow. I can't. It's, it's impossible and it, it's cruel. I have no money. I will find you money for your journey. You must go. Do you hear? You have no pity. Let me just speak to Bob. You won't? Oh, how are you to drive me out like a dog? It does seem hard, that I own, but I must be rough to you to be just a Bob. I shall come for you as soon as tis light and drive you away from Overcombe. Do you understand? John! Go!
same with us. But you bringing a wife and we'll need some change of rooms, I suppose. Or well, we shan't put you to any inconvenience. We'll stow away right enough. Breakfast be quite ready, sir. Is, uh, is Miss Johnson downstairs? Yet? Not yet, maester. Uh, we'll wait until she's down. Let me know when she is. I'll be getting terrible hungry. Aye, maester. Oh, she'll get up sooner than this, you know, once she's signed articles and got a berth here. <laughs> How long did you say you'd known this woman of thine? Uh, about a fortnight. <laughs> Not very long, eh, Bob? No, it don't seem long, tis true. And in truth, twas longer. It was uh, fifteen days. And a quarter. <laughs> oh, but hang it, old father. I could see in the twinkling of an eye that the girl would do. And I knows a woman well enough when I sees her. Oh, I'd take the widow Garland and her daughter Anne, for instance. Oh, the girl's a nice enough little thing. The old woman? Oh, no, not for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, what of her, pray? Well, she's... She... <coughs> I mean, I wouldn't have chosen her. She, she's a style of beauty I don't care for. Oh, if tis only looks you're talking of, there's nothing to be said, of course. <laughs> Although, there's many a duchess worse looking than Mrs. Garland. I've touched a tender spot, I see. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Loveday. Uh, how is Miss Johnson this morning, Captain Roberts? Thank you, ma'am. We're waiting for her to come down to breakfast. She's had a nice, long, quiet night, and we haven't hurried her. Well, I hope she's feeling better. Uh, here are some things that David has brought from Budmouth. That is the wedding cake, Captain Robert. And here are some apple pies. Oh, this is very kind of you, Mrs. Garland, I'm sure. Uh, we'll not find victuals like this. We ought to have a good time, eh, Father? Aye, aye, son. Must have forget the poor folk at such a time. Oh. We'll come in again after breakfast. Maester! Maester! I bid the call her! And as she didn't speak, I rapped! And as she didn't answer, I kicked! <laughs> And the door opened! And she's gone! Gone? Gone, man? What do you mean she's gone? Oh, let me go and see. Gone? Uh, Matilda gone? Whatever can have happened? Well, as far as I know, she asked if we could leave her last night. She wasn't well. And as far as I know, she went to bed early. Perhaps she's only gone for a morning walk. Well, this is all very mysterious. I suppose Bob has known her some time. Oh, he's not known her long, no. Well, I thought she was rather strange last night. But then, where can she have gone? Well, she's gone right enough. <laughs> and her box and her things are all gone too. Oh, Miss Garland, what's to be done? I'd be so lonely to cruise about for her by myself. Would you come and cheer the way? Where shall we look? Oh, in the holes in rivers and down wells and in quarries and over cliffs. <laughs> Your eye might catch the loom of a bit of shawl or bonnet that I might overlook. <laughs> Didn't you think highly of her, Miss Garland? Oh yes, very highly. She really was very beautiful. No nonsense about her looks, were there? No, no nonsense at all. Her beauty was thoroughly ripe. Not too young. 
<laughs> we should all have got to love her. What could have possessed her to run away like that? I don't know upon my soul. She's gone away in scorn of us. <coughs> in scorn of us? To my mind, she seemed glad enough to get a hold of us. Uh, there must be something wrong with a woman or it wouldn't have happened. Well, there'll be no wedding now, that's certain. But then what's to be done with the vittles? Give a dinner to the poor folk. That's the way to use these up. Well, that's true. The neighbours must never hear of Bob's folly. But I've been thinking, Mrs. Garland, ma'am, that there might be a wedding after all. Yours and mine, don't you know? <laughs> now, what do we say? They vittles ought to be wasted, and we ought to direct right off before the pies and cakes get mouldy and the blackfoot stale. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Loveday, th this is all rather sudden, but I shall have to talk to Anne and see what she has to say to it. Oh, that's quite right. Oh. I can break the news gentle to Bob when he's calmed down a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Not a sight nor a sound anywhere, Mason. Well, she liked me well enough. But when she came here and saw the house so homely, it wasn't good enough for her. Well, that can't be helped. What we be, we be. And I've been for generations. You don't know what delicate feelings are in a real, refined woman's mind, Father. Did you do anything to disgust her? Faith, not that I know of. <laughs> well, you always was very homely, you know. Yeah, so I be. I wonder what it could have been. He didn't go drinking out the large mug or wiping your mouth with your sleeve, did he? Well, now that I swear I didn't. Think so to myself, there's no knowing what I may do to shook her. So I'll take my solid, solid fiddles in the bakehouse and only a crumb and a drop in her company for manners. So there. Well, you can do no more than that, certainly. Well, then it must have been David. David! Come here. <laughs> How did you behave before that lady that mind you speak the truth? Yes, Captain Robert. I serve she like a royal queen, so help me! I've got it. The bed was hard. And nothing shocks a true lady like that. And the bed in that room was always as hard as the rock at Gibraltar. No, sir! The beds was changed. She had the goose bed, and you had the flock bed. Faith, I didn't know I had the flock bed. I slept on, little thinking what I was going to wait to. Well, then she's gone. I'll never find another like her. She was too good for me. What's the matter, Bob? Hmm. Uh, do you know of our great trouble, John? Come, tell me all about it. Uh, well, well, you know what it is. As a body told thee. Well, I know she's gone, yeah. but I'm glad of it. What's that you say? Oh, I'm at the bottom of it. You, John? Yes. If you listen, I'll tell you. Do you remember how she fainted when she saw me last night? Well, that was because she knew me. For once, Bob, I must say something that will hurt you a good deal. She is not a woman who could possibly be your wife. And so she's gone. Not a woman to be my wife. What the deuce do you mean? You sent her away, then? Well, yes, I did. Do you mean to tell me that you know her to be a woman of bad faith? Hush, Bob. She's known to all the regiment. <laughs> and you've been saved a terrible experience. Now, let's talk of old times. Oh, Jack, that's well enough for you to say. But I can't help thinking tis a cruel thing you've done. Mm. Should have been snug enough for I. Well, I will go after her. You can do as you like, Bob, but I would advise you strongly to leave matters where they are. Well, I won't leave matters where they are. You have made me miserable, and all for nothing. I will go after Oh, Bob, I hardly expected this. Well, that's because you don't know your man! Can I ask you to do me a kindness? Can I ask you not to say a word against her? To any of them at home? Well, certainly. The very reason I've got her to go away silently, as she has done, is because nothing should be said about her here. No scandal should be heard of. Well, that may be. But I will go after her. Marry that girl, I will. You'll be sorry for it! You think it's over, Bob. And I'm sure you will see that I have done what was right. Well, that we'll see. After all, maybe John's right. And yet, perhaps he's not. Heads I go, tails I stay. <laughs>
Hence it is. <laughs> but no, I won't go. I won't be steered by accidents any longer. It's all right, Captain Robin. I'm only after all her red. She's been found then? No, but it's all the same. <laughs> all the same? What do you mean? It's of no consequence and no harm will be done. No consequence? The Maester and Mrs. Garland mean to get married at once so as not to waste the wedding riddle. Ha <laughs> ha! I don't care for wedding vittles. Oh, how you disappoint me. But then why should I object to other people's happiness just because I've lost my own? Has David told you the news, my son? Do it hurt thy feelings at such a time? No, I'll come to bear it anyhow. Well said, my son. Mrs. Garland and I mean to get married so as not to waste the wedding feast. We mean to do it right off at once. It was a good thought of mine and Mrs. Garland's, and I'm glad it is settled. I hope you don't mind, Robert. Oh, no, of, of course not, Mike. My, my congratulations. Oh, poor Matilda. <laughs> there now. I was afraid it would hurt thy feelings, making preparations for thy wedding and using them for mine. <laughs> Poor Matilda. But you, you can't expect me to join in. You, you hardly can. I can sheer off for the day. Very easily, you know. Nonsense, Bob! I couldn't stand it. I should break down. Well, juice take me if I'd have asked her then, if I'd known it would drive thee out of the house. Now come, Bob. I'll find a way of arranging it and sobering it down so it shall be as melancholy as you require. In short, just like a funeral, Bob, <laughs> if thou promise to stay. Very well. On that condition, I'll stay. Oh, do come in, Mrs. Cripplethwaite. Thank you very much, ma'am. Old Squire Derriman up at the hall is, is very poorly. He wants Miss Anne to come back with me. Oh, I <laughs> I bought the horse and gig to fetch you, miss. Is he really ill, or is it just one of his tricks to get me up there? Well, he ain't exactly ill, but as you value the peace of mind of an old and troubled man, I was to ask you to come, miss. What does he want to see me for? He wants to see you very particular about the French, I believe. Oh, and here's a gift from my maester. Oh, I do believe the old miser is in love with you, Anne. Well, why doesn't he come down himself to see me? He wants you at the house, please, miss. I suppose he has some reason for sending. I expect so, miss, yes. Oh, do go, Anne. I'm sure you won't regret it. Is Mr Festus going to be at the hall? <laughs> oh, no, miss. No, he won't be there, miss. He's away at quarters. Very well, then. I suppose he wants me to read the papers to him. I expect so, miss, yes. David! <clears throat> Give us a hand, dear. Oh, go over there. Well done, Abram. That's good.
16, 18, 20, 22, 23, and a half. <laughs> Northwest. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, and three quarters. Northeast. Hmm. Ah! Well, thank heavens you've come, my dear. Did you forget it was your day to trip across and read a newspaper to me? It's cost me a horse and a gig and a man's time in coming for you. Oh. No, oh, but there are. Ah. Since you've come, I don't begrudge you anything. I don't much like coming even now. What made you so seriously anxious to see me? Well, well, you, you are a good girl uh, and true. Uh, of all the people I can trust, you are the best. Uh, it is about my my bonds and my title deeds, um, such as they are, and my leases, you know, and a few guineas in packets, and more than those, my will that I was to, want to speak about. Why? No, oh, it's like this. The French may be here any day. That's certain. Heaven knows what will happen to the men of these parts, but the women will most likely be spared. Now, you see, I'll show you. See down there? Down there? Yes, I must trouble you to look down there. Oh, no, not too close, not too close. Now, I fought and fought of a woman who could best keep a secret about a buried tin box for six months. And I said to myself, Anne Garland. Hmm? You wouldn't be married before then. Oh, no. Uh, I wouldn't expect you to keep a close tongue after such a thing as that. <laughs> Is that all, sir? Uh, just, just a moment longer, my honey. Come here a moment. Now, the French may be here any day, that's certain. If there's fighting going on in the fields, it may be here. You will know what to do. This is all very strange, Mr. Derriman, and I'm not sure I like it much. Hmm. Sixteen and three quarters north east. 23 and a half north west. There, that's done. Now, I'll seal it up and give it to you to keep safe until I ask you for it. Or until you hear of my being trampled on by the enemy. But what does it mean? Hi, <laughs> it's the distance of the buried tin box from the two corners of the garden. Hmm. Now, to make all sure, if the French soldiers are after you, then you be sure to tell your mother the meaning of it, in case you get killed, <laughs> or the secret be lost. You see? Now, mind you keep that safe. And uh, sh shall I ask Mrs. Cripplestraw to drive you home now? Oh, no. I'm off to a christening in Springham now. Hmm. I'll make my own way. But I will take the paper now, if you're done with it. Oh, you may have the paper. I never get to see what's in it. Oh, clear me off. No! No, you shan't have it. I've got to have my share of it. I'm a poor, put upon old soul. I don't wish to take it off you if you're not finished with it, but owing to being later than usual because of the soldiers the coming. The soldiers? Drat the soldiers. Rot them. Now there'll be, there'll be hen's nests robbed and hedges broke down and sucking pigs stolen and I don't know what else. 
And who's to pay for it all, eh? Hmm. Hmm. Oh, well, you may read to me a bit if you will. Dinner at Carlton House? Oh, no faith, that's nothing to me. Defence of the country. Now, ah, you may read that if you will. What's that? Hey? What, do, what do you see out there? There's a yeoman, one of... <coughs> soldier? Hmm. Oh, scrunch it all, it's my nephew. Oh, oh, read on privy, my dear. Oh. Ah. Nunky, how do you feel? Glad to see you. <laughs> oh, I'm bad, bad, I'm bad and rackish, Thestus. Oh, to be tender. Oh, a little more softly. There's a dear nephew. Oh, oh. Oh, my arm is no more than a cobweb. <laughs> oh, poor soul. Why, you were all a tremble, uncle. Oh, yes, yeah, it is because I'm. Pleased to see you, Festus. Uh, I always get all of a tremble when I'm taken by surprise by a beloved relative. Ah, it is how we do in the army. You scarcely expected to see me. But here I am! Yes. Oh, 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 <laughs> I'm, I'm glad to see you, Festus, dear. You're not going to stay long, perhaps. <laughs> Quite the contrary, Uncle. I'm going to stay ever so long. Oh, I see. Oh. Oh, I'm so pleased, Festus. Ever so long, did you say? Yes, ever so long. In fact, I'm going to make this quite my own home. And then when the wars are over, I will come and live with you and make you a, a comfortable old man. Ah, how you do please me. Yes, I knew it would relieve you. Oh, you always wear kind that, that way. Yes, I always was. I'll stay here all day and all night too. Just to oblige you. Oh, thank you. That will be very nice. Yes, I knew it would relieve you. Oh. Oh. I wish I had a present to give you, Festus, but as ill luck would have it, I've lost a deal of stock this year and I've had to pay out so much. But, uh, uh, have you? Have you heard the news? No. Nope. Eh? They say that Bowley will choose this part of the coast for his landing. And that the yeomanry uh, will be put in the front as a forlorn hope. <laughs> <laughs> who's, who's told you this? Ah, the newspaper men say so. No, no, there's nothing in that. <laughs> Yes, why, it is our little Anne. And are you and your mother always going to stay down there in the mill house looking at all the little fishies, Miss Anne? I suppose so. Why do you ask it? I hope you will. I'll be getting along now, Mr. Derriman, unless you want any more reading. Don't let me hinder well, you. Will you or won't you, my dear? I cannot read to two. Da! Ha. Ha. I must go on. Ha. You cannot come with me, Mr. Festus. Nonsense! Nonsense! You you foolish girl! I, I will walk with you down to the corner. No, we might be seen, and I don't wish it. Now, now, that shyness. Come. Get off! I don't allow it! Well, 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 well allow it or not, allow it or not, I will. <laughs> well, then you are cruel, and I must submit. Oh. Oh, <laughs> well, uh, oh, dash my wig. I, I won't do any such thing for the world. <laughs> Why, I thought your go away meant come on! <laughs> As it does with so many of the women I meet, especially in these clothes. Now, uh, you are coming this way tomorrow, perhaps? No, that is not likely. Then Sunday? No, not Sunday either. Monday? No. Tuesday? No. Wednesday, surely? It is unlikely I will come any of those days. That is quite unnatural. That's rough on me. Seeing as how girls are after us soldiers as a rule. <laughs> Did you speak? No. Perhaps you don't like us soldiers as a body. Even the finest specimens of us. <laughs> <laughs> Did you laugh? Did I laugh? Why, yes, you know you did, you young sneerer. Are you laughing at me? Is that who you were laughing at? I would like to know what you would do without 
such a one as me, if the French were to drop in upon ye any night. Oh, would you beat them off, Mr. Derryman? Can you ask what I'm for? You don't think anything of us soldiers? I think a lot of soldiers. When they come back from war covered in their glory. But when I think about how they got that glory, I don't like them so much. Well, you mean the business of, uh, of chopping off heads and blowing up brains and all that sort of thing. <laughs> Quite right. A tender heart like yours should feel a little horrified. Whereas me... I wouldn't mind a battle a week. <laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> Are you laughing again? What? No. Merely admiring, I assure you. Oh. 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 <laughs> Dash milk. my wig, that girl's a will. <laughs> you like some milk, sir? Milk? Ah, oh, no, no. Horrible stuff. I am Festus Derriman, not a babe in arms. Away with ye, go on. Suit yourself. Hmm. Looks horrible stuff. <sighs> not got young, not gone yet, eh, Nuffy? <laughs> no. Uh, <coughs> oh, yeah. oh, you see how ill I am? Oh, oh. No better by any means, you oh. see. So, I can't entertain you as well as I would. Why not try <laughs> a change of air? See this? This is a dull, damp. Oh, oh in indeed it is, Festus. Yeah. And I am thinking of moving. Where to? Oh, uh, up into the garret. Near in the north corner. There's no fireplace in the room, but... Oh, I shan't have need of that poor soul of me. He's not moving. Now. <laughs> I tell you what, then, Uncle Benji. You shall go on to... Badmouth? Badmouth! Yes! Oh, now I won't hear a word against no, it. Oh, Miss no, Cripplesaw shall drive no, you up there straight no, away and I'll come and no, see you in a couple of days. No, yeah. no, no, I tell you, it will be the death of me. Nonsense and no. do your power of good. No. Go, you shall. Right. Mrs. Cripplesaw! Coming, sir. Coming. Come on. Yes, Master Derriman. <sighs> no. I want you to find someone to drive the old miser up to Budmouth and find him some lodgings there for a few days. He needs a change of air. Do you understand? Yes. And, Miss Cripplestraw, lay a supper inside for six. Supper for six? God have mercy on me. What will the squire say? Never you mind. I've invited some friends of mine down from the camp yonder. Ah, you want the old man out the way, don't you? Oh. He's as deep as the old man himself. Yes, it's deep. And where am I supposed to get food for supper for six? When you're done six muttering people. to yourself over there, come and clean my military boots here. This pigsty of my uncle's is not fit for a soldier's cupboard. Now, Miss Cripplestraw, <laughs> <laughs> what deal of stock has my uncle lost this year? Well, sir, let me see. I can call to mind we've lost three chickens, a tom pigeon and a weekly suckling pig, one of a fair of ten. But I can't think of no more, sir. Not a lot after all, eh? The old rascal. The old what, you say? Nothing, nothing. He's tight-handed. He's close-fisted. Oh, fie, sir. I own he is a little. Yes. I hope he treats you well in your fortune, sir. I hope he does, too. Now, do people talk about... Me here. Well, <laughs> sir, yes, they does off and on, you know. They say you be as fine a piece of cavalry flesh and bones <laughs> as was ever growed in fallow ground. What? <laughs> and I wish I was no more afraid of the French than you be. Well, you uh, needn't take it as uh, well, you take it as careless as I do. Yeah, ah. There is as good as I in the army, and <laughs> even better. Oh, yeah. and they do say, sir, that when you fall this summer, you'll die like a man. <laughs> What do you mean? Well, well, sir, really, sir, I shan't forget you when you lies a mouldering in your soldier's grave. What, what do you mean well, when well, I Well, because, sir, by all accounts, the yeomanry will be put in the front. Ah, put in the front? That's what my uncle said. Yes, sir, and naturally, they'll be mowed <laughs> down like grass. And you amongst them, poor young gallant ossifer. <laughs> Now look here, Miss Cripplesaw, this is a foolish report. 
How can the yeomanry be put in front? Nobody's put in front. No, we yeomanry will be away in the houses and in the safe places guarding the, the jewels <laughs> and possessions. Now, do you really think... Well, sir, I'm afraid I do. Uh, and I know uh, a great warrior like you will only be too glad of the chance. It will be a great thing for you. Death and glory. <laughs> I hope upon my heart you get what you desire. <laughs> I often pray for it at night for you, sir. Oh, cuss you, me <laughs> pray about it. No, no, sir, I won't then. But my sword will do its duty. There, that's enough. Now, bring us some of the squire's strong beer. Oh, sir, you be a deep one. <laughs> With the old miser out of the way, I can have a hunt for the money. He's got stored away somewhere. But by gad, I'll have some fellows down from the camp tonight, and we'll have a merry time with the squire's strong beer. Retire Here they are! Riding down to Butmouth Town, I reach way first to Lee, and maiden mistress summoning to tend the hostelry. Oh, Sawyer is a great thing, a great thing to me! <laughs> Comrades, I've packed off my scram-damp, blue-villy, barbie-alley crown and uncle's a butter! Now, he takes care that there will be no comfort here. Oh. So you must take things as you find them. Uh. There's little to eat for certain, uh. but we will find plenty of drink. Drink! Drink! drink. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I came to fetch you home, Miss Anne. Your mother was very anxious to know what had become of you. You promised to come home. Well, yes, I did, Mr Loveday, but I would have thought she'd guessed where I was. She asked you to come and get me, I suppose. Well, she didn't exactly ask me. Well, then what did she say? She said that you had gone to the christening party at Springham, but, but something else asked me to meet you. And what was that? Well... You must know, Miss Garland. How should I, dear Trumpet Major? Did you say dear Trumpet Major? I was merely inquiring what or who asked you to come. Well, something inside me. Frankly, my own heart. Uh, that's sentimental, Mr Loveday. Well, it may be. More's my misfortune if you don't like it. Oh, I do like it dearly. Oh, how sweet of you to say so. Oh, dear, good, pretty Anne. I meant I liked it in books. Reading about it. You know, when... People in books say nice things to each other. Oh. <laughs> then one that is sad must be sad still, and indulge in no hope at all. I'm sorry, Mr Loveday. I wish I was warmer. Shall we get along now? Shall we go across the fields? How strange it was Miss Matilda Johnson leaving so suddenly like that. Yes, it was. She seemed to know you. Yeah, she did. Then you've met before? Yes. I don't suppose you had anything to do with her going away. Yes. I mean, no. Gad, I won't explain. What can he mean? <laughs> what? What's that? I don't know. I'll go and see. But what is it? Festus Durham has some company in the house. Listen. <laughs> hey, cheer! <up. laughs> the old squire can't be at home. Come on, let's go. Hush! There's someone coming! Hide! No, I shan't pay you more than a shilling! That saddle was so rough it's taken tons off the see me best britches! Be off of you! It's the old square! You're home early, sir! Oh, is that, is that you, Anne? Why, faith, I couldn't bide in such a ruination tone! Your hand in your pocket every minute of the day! To shilling for this? Half a crown for that? If you only eat one egg or a poor windfall of an apple, you've got to pay. It's a bunch of radishes as a halfpenny, quarter cider, tuppence free farthing at the lowest reckoning. Nothing without paying. That King George has ruined the town for honest folk. What was that? Your neighbour's got company. What? Your your nephew. What? Huh? Huh? Oh. Oh. He's got.
got my best silver tankard that oh. I've never used. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, I want my best strong beer. There's eight, eight candles guttering away in there and I've not used four this past half year. You didn't know he was here then? No, no. Nothing is known to poor me. Oh, look, there's, there's my table scratched uh, and my chair's broken. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, oh. Comrades! Comrades, 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 comrades. I am melancholy. Oh, no! A woman has got my heart in her pocket. Oh. And I've got hers in mine. <laughs> now, she's not much. To other folk, I mean. But she is to me. Oh. No. The little thing came my way and conquered me. Mm. I should have looked higher. I know. No, no, what no, of no, that? No, no, no. It is a fate that may happen to the greatest man. Mm. True. Comrades, a toast. It's my lady love. Your lady love. <laughs> What's her name? What's her name? Well, her name is. 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 Ah. Uh, uh, um, her name is spelt. 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 What a name! Um. N. N. But I won't give you the rest. Oh, nah, no. she don't live a hundred miles off though, lads, and she wears the prettiest cap ribbon you ever saw. Please. No, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. Wait um, until a poor man has got into his home. <clears throat> Manalos! 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 At your own dear door. <laughs> Thank you. She's in my hand, so it's not required. <laughs> but I had my sword. Yes. You cannot quarrel. Well, let's put it to her. Whichever of us she likes best, he shall take her home. Yeah. Miss Anne, which? <laughs> you shall both walk me home. One on one side and the other on the other. And if you're not quite civil to each other, I shall never speak to either of you. Ever again. Oh. Go and get your hat, Mr. Dover, yes. and be quick about it. Yes, well, you'll wait until I've got it. Yes. Uh, what? What for has locked the door? Quick, let's run the leaf. Well, we promise to wait. Oh. Huh? Oh. Uh, fire on you for making such a hullabaloo in a weak old man's door. <laughs> uh, what's in you to rouse honest folk at such a time of night? Oh. <laughs> Hang me, it is Uncle Benji. Oh, right. <laughs> Why, Nanky, it is I, Festus, Festus, wanting to come in. Oh, no, 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 my man. No, 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 no. My nephew, dear boy, is miles away at quarters oh. and oh. asleep by this time. No, no, no. no. that story won't no. do at all. Upon my soul, it is I, Festus. Ah, not tonight, my man, not tonight. <laughs> Mrs. Crippletrop, bring my blunderbuss. Let's break in the windows and shutters. Get some big stones. Big stones. Oh, no, 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 no. Comrades, no, no. He's subject to fits. Perhaps we would drive him into him, then it'll be manslaughter. No, no, comrades, comrades. We must march without. Our uh, hats. What? Yeah, I, I without our our honour is at stake, lads. Yes. Now, no. let's go and see my beauty home. Yes? Yeah. Uh, she's she's gone. gone. Gone? Yeah. Gone, man. Gone. It is my enemy. That has tempted her away with him. Yes. <laughs> Could I find that regular, that regular that common man? That man? I would. Oh, oh, yes, you would. Yes, 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 yes. yes. You would. What? Um. I would, <laughs> I would say, I would take him by the hand and say, guard her, if you are my friend, guard her from all harm. <laughs> A good speech, and I will too. Come, Miss Anne, 
Hey! 